Hey, what's up guys? Marcus Bird, aka Birdmas here, and today we're at Edaman School of Art, Dance, Drama, etc. And I was really curious about something going on today, which is the, you know, like the Poetry Society of Jamaica is honoring Mervyn Morris, who is the first poet laureate in 50 years in Jamaica. And I've been seeing all the articles, and you know, I've actually never heard his poetry, but I've heard of him. And you know, he's gonna come, well, he's gonna come here and read live, and I said, yo, let me check it out and share it with you guys. So, you're gonna see that in just a little bit. <laughs> At this point, we are going to welcome the man of the. They say, oh, I can feel it spans beyond that, right? Professor Mervyn Morris is a dedicated scholar, teacher, writer, and has basically spent his entire life committed to literature and to culture and to documenting that. And we feel deeply indebted to echo what Oku was saying earlier. You know, we are definitely privileged to have had and to continue to have his work as an example. And for those of us who have had the privilege of being in a classroom with him, we are definitely privileged. And we welcome Professor Mervyn Morris. And I would like for you to put your hands together, extend your hearts, and just give him a warm, warm welcome to us. <laughs> Professor Mervyn Morris, everyone. Poetry Society, thank you, Mbala, thank you, um, Raymond, thank you, Aku, and thank you all for being here. Um, some of this has taken me by surprise, but I promise you I won't delay you long. I'll just read a few of the short poems. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't bring the long ones tonight. Um, I know that many of the people here <coughs> either have written or have been trying to write. <coughs> so I think that a couple of poems that might resonate with them are the ones I'll begin with. Peeling orange. They used to say, you peel an orange perfect and you get new clothes. But when my father tried to teach me slide the knife up to the safeguard thumb, I moved the weapon like a saw in my hand and the damn rind break. And if you have the time, you can come see me in my old clothes. <laughs> Peeling. <laughs> Um, some of you have been in workshops and um, you probably know the dangers of workshops. People having said, oh, this is not about me, then proceed to spill their guts in workshops. So we tend to learn quite a lot about each other in workshops. This is called short story. One, how carefully they walk together, hardly ever touching. Neither he nor she is rushing into anything. But something's going on beneath the easy talk of books and family and friends. Read on. Two. They're in a private place together, searching through the story, getting to know the characters, intertwining themes, discretion, and desire, exploring conflict, complication, restructuring lives in the imagination. Three, goodbye. Let's keep in touch, they say, without conviction. They hug each other warmly and depart but each has nestled in the other's art. So it's another story in the fiction. Mm, 
I don't have very many new poems, but this is one. It's called To an Interviewer, and it's for Usain Bolt. Greatness is to fall start and to feel the world drop. Let's see. I'll start again. Greatness is to fall start and to feel the world stop dead. Me draw my shirt off, leave the track and watch the race in shock. Greatness is to look inside the failure, try my best to swallow up the pain. Greatness is to get my head to settle on the next event. Run right this time and hear the stadium go wild. Case history, Jamaica. In 19 something, X was born in Jubilee Hospital, howling black. In 19 any day plus four, X went out to school. They showed him pretty pictures of his queen. When he was seven in elementary school, he asked what niggers were. In secondary school, he knew. He asked in history one day where slaves came from. Oh, Africa, the master said, get on with your work. Up at the university, he didn't find himself. And months before he finally dropped out, would ramble around the campus late at night and daub his blackness on the walls. Love is, love is a giving and a measured taking, amputation recreating everlasting interface, a prison and an open space, a teasing glimpse of holy grail, a generator that can fail, the naked jugular, the knife, the torsion balance in my life. Say family, say friends, say wife, say love, say life, say learning, laughter, sunlight, rain. Say cycle, circle, music, memory. Say night and day, say sun and moon, say see you soon. Both of us are done. Mm -hmm. Alright, so first I have to say this is you know like a big moment for Jamaican poetry. Here at Mervyn Morris, you know, like what first poet lark in fifty years? Yes, that's that's the, that's, that's what the Gleaner said, I didn't say that. But um, you know, it just ended and it was um it was great, you know, he took us through poetry about love, you know, there's comedic poetry, poetry about stuff that, you know, is before many of us were here and I liked learning about it. So I wanna say hello. And um, you know, tell us a little bit about how you feel, you know. I mean, obviously, you know, Tommy said you're a behind the scenes kind of person, so you're not necessarily hyping over the but How do you feel, you know, being a point? Well, it's, 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 a, it's a real honor, and I'm glad about it now. Mm -hmm. But um, I have a lot of working out to do with the others who are managing the project in terms of knowing how far the money can spread mm -hmm. <laughs> and what's really possible yeah. um, with it. So I, I, I'm not really making many firm statements about okay. what I will do, not at this time. Alright, no problem. I mean, we're not official news agency. <laughs> but what do you have to say to like, you know, young and upcoming poets right now? Keep writing and never be afraid to write bad things. Just keep writing. And um, if you don't notice, somebody will tell you when it's getting a little bit better. <laughs> Well, yeah, they uh, always practi do. Practice always helps. <laughs> and last but not least, um, who are some of your major influences as a writer, poet, or just in, in general?
general as a person, human being? Yeah. Um, I suppose among my influences were some poet friends who mm -hmm. I exchanged poems with quite a lot, particularly in the beginning of the 70s. Mm -hmm. And those were um, Wayne Brown, Dennis Scott, Tony McNeil. Okay. Um, we met quite often at the, on the Mona campus where I was working. Mm -hmm. And um, I learned a lot from each of them. All right, so do we have any new projects to look forward to? New books or anything in the works? I'm working on a, a collected poems. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, well, thank you so much for sitting on and talking to me. Okay. I'm Marcus Bird, also known as Birdimus, and I'm here again with Mervyn Morris, you know, like uh, Port Lord from... Uh, which Port Lord? Was there a specific title? How would I say No, it's just called Port Lord. Huh? Okay, a superstar Port Lord. Right here, coming from, <laughs> coming from the Edna Malley uh, School of Art. I'll catch you next time. All right, so it's over, you know, you just saw me interview the man himself, and I have to say it went very well. I really enjoyed it. I mean, the art scene in Jamaica, it doesn't get much exposure, but definitely when stuff like this happens, it's significant, and you can see he got a standing ovation, and I really enjoyed his poetry, you know, it was, it was powerful, even though the poems are short, and there's a gravity to them that, you know, reflects, like, him being who he is, and I can see why he got the honor, and hopefully you can check out his work, um, I'll try and post some links on the video if I can find them and yo until next time I'll catch you later